Um, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> it's just my personal opinion. That's all it is. Take it for what it's worth. Somebody's got to say it, so I'm going to say it. We need a new president in 2024. We need a new president. Now, when we saw what we saw the other day, Biden handing out diplomas to graduates at the Air Force Academy in Colorado, and we saw him fall. You'll see it right here. Watch him. He tripped, tripped over a sandbag. Let me be very, very clear about where I'm going with this. That could happen to anybody. It's not a big deal. I've tripped and bust my behind on several occasions, sometimes running up the stairs. It happens. It's not the end of the world. It's not evidence that he's just not all there. But he is 80. He'll be 81 by the end of his term. Approaching 82. And there have been times where you've looked at him and you said, I don't know. I'm not calling for him to be removed from office. I'm not calling for the 25th Amendment to be invoked so Kamala Harris can take over the presidency and all of this other stuff. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not trying to disrespect our president. I mean, I like some of the things that he did as a senator. Remember, he was a part of that crime bill in the 90s. He was one of those people that was calling folks predators, even though the Congressional Black Caucus obviously had no problem with him taking that position at that time, which is a different subject altogether. I am in no way trying to disrespect our president. I voted for him. And based on some of the leading candidates on the right side, I'd probably be forced to vote for him again. Because they scared the living hell out of me with some of the things that they're preaching about. But I wouldn't like it. Because ladies and gentlemen, without trying to engage in any kind of ageism at all, because I don't believe in it. There does come a point in time where there are certain jobs you don't need. It's not that you don't need to be working. It's not that you don't need to be living your life. It's not that you don't need to be living a very vibrant lifestyle or anything like that. But there are responsibilities that are far, far, far more extensive than let's say the typical nine to five that somebody in their eighties may not need to be doing. I think the presidency is one of them. I do. And even though that's not a big deal because anybody could have tripped over a sandbag, you know what the Republicans are going to do during the campaign. Every word he stutters, every sentence he fumbles, and Lord help him if he trips and falls again, all they're going to do is try to indicate that that's a reason as to why you shouldn't vote for him. But here's one of my biggest reasons. And again, forget Biden for a second, because this is no disrespect to him. What does it say about our country where we're looking at an 80 year old who will be 82 if he wins the presidency again in 2024? What does it say about our country if that's what we're depending on? I mean, to the Democrats, y'all ain't got nobody, nobody. I know it's a double negative. I know I'm grammatically incorrect. It's on purpose. It's for effect. Damn, y'all don't got nobody. 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 Well, I do. Let me give you a few names. You know, they talked about some woman, Marianne Williamson, an author and spiritual advisor who sought the Democratic nomination in 2020, the first Democrat to officially declare her candidacy, jumping into the race despite indications that the president will seek another term. She has no political experience. She has no chance. This is not Trump part deux. Ain't happening. 
okay? Robert F. Kennedy Jr., we can't forget him. He's 69, by the way, nephew of, of President John F. Kennedy and the son of his slain brother, Robert F. Kennedy, both assassinated. What is he famous for? Other than once being a best-selling author, I would know something about that straight shooter. Memoir of Second Chances and First Takes. Check your local bookstores online as well. You'll see my book, Stephen A. Smith, Straight Shooter. I know something about being a best-selling author. He was also an environmental lawyer. But now what is he most famous for? Being an anti-vaccine activist whose work has been described by public health experts and members of his own family as misleading and dangerous. I threw out those two names because those are two official candidates. Can I give you some unofficial ones? Just for consideration? Can I give you one, please? I can give you a Democratic choice right now that is unbeatable. Nobody will beat this person. Nobody. Michelle Obama. She'd win by a landslide. I don't care or if there's a woman alive who wouldn't vote for Michelle Obama. Maybe you could find a few, I guess. Won't be many. 99% of the female population in this country will vote for Michelle Obama. And let me tell you something else. So would 99% of the black community. So would at least 89% of the Hispanic community. I predict at least 80% of the white community will vote for Michelle Obama. Now we know she ain't running. She detests Capitol Hill. She was there for eight years as the first lady. We can't knock her for that. We know this is pie in the sky. She ain't going that route. We get that. We understand it. But she is unbeatable. Nobody would beat her. Nobody. I don't care what they say, especially in the day and age when Roe v. Wade has been overturned. There's no way in hell she would lose. But that's pie in the sky. I'm obligated to point out Elizabeth Warren. Senator from Massachusetts. Because obviously she's ran before and she's hinted at running again. My issue with Elizabeth Warren is one thing and one thing only. If you don't agree with her, she makes you feel like you're going to hell. That's my only problem with Elizabeth Warren. I'm not talking policy. I'm certainly not talking character or anything like that. Very smart, highly intellectual, what have you. It's just that every time I listen to her speak, when she's talking to people, it's like if you don't agree with her, you're destined for hell. She always has this high moral ground that exceeds everyone else's. That bothers me. Sorry to sound like Mad Dog Russo for Mad Dog Russo, but that bothers me. I don't like that. Bernie Sanders, look, I want to go home with more than 20% of my money. Sorry. I'm a capitalist. I believe every American citizen should walk home with at least 50% of their money. I believe that. But here's some other candidates. I wouldn't mind seeing Hillary Rodham Clinton take a third shot at it. The woman is just smart. Everybody trying to talk about whatever it is that they think she's done and corrupt and, you know, the 33,000 emails that dis stop it. You had Trump for four years. You ain't in no position to be talking about people and their behavior. Hell with that. And by the way, she won a popular vote. Third shot of Hillary Rodham Clinton, I wouldn't mind. Although I'm totally not down with Gavin Newsom and the policies in California. I think he'd be a better candidate than Biden right now. You know who else I like? I like Hakeem Jeffries. Minority whip in the house. For the Dems. I like Hakeem Jeffries. I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind seeing him go at it. I like Hakeem Jeffries. Okay. This ain't going to happen either. But because I'm about my business. And although I'm socially liberal, I'm fiscally conservative. I do. I do like the idea of a businessman. Somebody that knows business, that knows something about an economy, that knows what it takes to resurrect fledgling things. 
I think Bob Iger is the greatest I've ever seen. I just do. He'll never run. I mean, he's living his life, running Disney, but this man has hovered over Disney for 16 plus years. The troubles, the storms that Disney's experienced right now ain't his fault. Hell, even the stuff with DeSantis ain't his fault. That was happening before he came back. Bob Iger's that dude. Ain't gonna happen. No, I'm just telling you my personal preferences. And in terms of the plausible, Bob Iger's not gonna happen. Michelle Obama's not gonna happen. Hakeem Jeffries is a possibility. Gavin Newsom's obviously a possibility. Respectfully to the president, smart, accomplished, been around a long time, no disrespect whatsoever, I voted for you. I just don't believe somebody in their 80s should be running the country. Just like I thought Ruth Bader Ginsburg should have walked away while Obama was still in office so he could have selected her successor, but she wanted to hold on to her seat because you know what? That means Hillary Rodham Clinton is going to win the election, and that way a woman will will select my successor. Very arrogant on her part. She assumed Hillary was going to win. She was wrong. Trump won. Then she passed away. God bless and rest her soul. And as a result, instead of a 5-4 majority, on the conservative side in the court, it's now 6-3. And if DeSantis or Trump wins, it'll be 7-2. Because we arrogantly think we could just wait and it's people's turn. and also, The American people decide that. Not you. Let us pick who the best candidate is. And if we don't believe it's Kamala Harris or Gavin Newsom or Joe Biden or we, or we prefer Michelle Obama or Hakeem Jeffries or even Elizabeth Warren or somebody, then let that be the case. 